Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat for Career Motor. Hope you're all having a great day. Today we go to Daytona Super Speedway in both the Xfinity Series and in the Cup Series. We had subscriber Dustin Davis in the car for the Xfinity Series race. Uh, unfortunately, we always start at the back here in the uh, Xfinity Series and Cup Series when it comes to qualifying uh, at any plate track. I actually ran a full-on custom setup, at least for qualifying in the Cup Series, and you're going to see just how bad it still went uh, for us in a few moments. But I did not run a custom setup in the race, obviously. That would just not make sense. But as we came through a little bit later in this event, you see Dustin Davis actually got into an incident with Morgan Shepard trying get his way through the field. Actually, it wasn't late at all, I should say. It was actually within the first few laps as the car got on his side, and that, unfortunately, would be the end of Dustin's race due to that incident there. So it would be P38 for him here in Daytona. So we're coming straight through into qualifying for the Cup Series. I cross the line right, with a 46.299, and surprisingly, we go P40 here in Daytona. No surprise at all. In reality, now is we're going to get ready to go green here from the last starting position. We'll probably gain a few spots uh, at the start of the race due to inspection issues, but on the pole, we got Kyle Bush, shocker there. NASCAR returns to Daytona for the running of the Coke Zero Sugar 400. Hello, race fans. We're halfway through what has so far been an amazing regular season. The racing action at Daytona is as hot and unpredictable as the Florida weather. We're all set to go 400 miles. All right. Thank you, Rick Allen. We're ready to go green here for the Coke Zero Sugar 400 at Daytona International Speedway. Kyle Busch on the pole. Ryan Truex uh, sent to the back after failing optical scanning station multiple times. And Joey Logano in the 22 car had an engine change after qualifying. So he'll be starting in the back, which means we advance up two positions as we get ready to go green from P38 here at Daytona International Speedway. The second Daytona race of the season is a green flag is out. And we are underway here uh, looking for our first ever plate victory as we still haven't won at a plate track uh, in our career mode obviously I think in our NASCAR Heat 3 career mode we only won one plate race and I think that was like Talladega or something in the 48 car if I remember correctly but Kyle Busch leads the field along with William Byron down into turns one lately in our career mode William Byron has been struggling quite a bit he started the season off very well he was well inside the top 16 in points I think it was up towards like 10th place or so and then unfortunately for William he has all of a sudden just had a bunch of issues go, uh, for in his way he's been struggling so much now he finds himself barely inside the playoffs so we know we're gonna have to watch him Jimmy Johnson another notable and Chris Buescher as well as obviously Daytona is certainly a good uh, potential racetrack for a surprise winner to be able to lock himself into the playoffs I'm very against uh, I actually you see me get into the wall there but I'm very against basically the win and you're in thing uh, to get into the playoffs because I feel like a guy like um, uh, the 31 or something of Tyler Reddick could win a race and he's 23rd in points and then that could lock him in the playoffs that's just not right in my opinion now as we came through though on lap 6 of 11 already in the stage we had only climbed up to P32 so I certainly struggled within these opening handful of laps as Jimmy Johnson actually was leading the way at this point in the stage. Kevin Harvick, our teammate on my outsides, we're not the only Stuart Haas car right now struggling. There's that would go three wide under the 52 of Cody Ware, as I believe it was the 12 of Ryan Blaney at that point on his outside. And we came through, though, on now lap seven, continuing to move our way forwards as we were starting to figure things out here on this bottom lane as Jimmy Johnson continued to lead the way as really no one could make a move on Jimmy Johnson. It was looking like early on here in this first stage, Jimmy Johnson had a lot of speed in that 48 car so if things go his way he could be a potential uh, candidate to maybe actually be in the conversation for the race victory here today in Daytona but as we know at a plate race like this or at a pack race anything can happen at any time now as we would get to the inside of Martin Truex Jr. continuing to work our way forwards now up inside the top 25 we would climb up into P19 as it came to just two to go in the stage approaching the final lap as we had looked to the inside of the two car of Brad Kozlowski heading down this front straightaway behind the 43 Bubba, Bubba Wallace William Byron who's like I said uh, earlier, in a really tight position in the playoffs, had actually fallen behind us. So he's not going to get any stage points on this final lap here in stage one. Jimmy Johnson continued to lead as no one could make a move on him there as we clear the 47 of Ryan Priest, running P17 behind the 42 of our former rival from earlier this season of Kyle Larson. And now as we go down this back straight away, just going to get right up to his back bumper now as we're going to give him just a tiny bit of a shot. Don't want to make him angry, obviously, as we finally got him away from being a rival as we go down, though, into turns three and at turns four. For the final time in the stage, Jimmy Johnson leads over his Hendrick Motorsports teammates of Alex Bowman and Chase Elliott. So three Hendrick cars, one, two, three, and then William Byron's in like 23rd. Now as we come through down this front straightaway, it's not going to be stage points for us, unfortunately, but it's a Hendrick one, two, three in stage one led by Jimmy Johnson as we get P15. So certainly looking like Hendrick 
has some speed here today uh, in or tonight in Daytona as we would pit though for two cans of fuel and four tires and get ready to go green here in the second stage uh, from P14. So unfortunately we gained one position on the pit lane and it's unfortunate because now we're starting on the outside. Some tracks you can obviously make an outside restart work, uh, but at plate races or at plate tracks it's just a disaster when you start on the outside. So it wasn't very happy uh, with starting on the outside, but obviously 10 laps in stage 2, a little bit shorter than stage 1 now as we start behind the 20 of Eric Jones, Corey LaJoy the 32 on our inside. Earlier this season, Corey LaJoy was actually in the playoffs. He was in the playoffs for a good 9 or 10 races. It wasn't like he was just kind of up there from luck. No, he was still battling for a potential playoff spot and then obviously his performance is falling off kind of like William Byron says and as we come through out of turns through so it wasn't a great launch for me uh, on this restart as we go down this back straightaway side by side with the 17 of Ricky Stanos Jr. who is obviously a notable driver every time we come to a play track he is certainly not afraid to be aggressive and make some very aggressive moves now as we come through turns three and turns four we already got three lanes forming here you see Larson, Hamrick, Bubba Wallace all in the, the middle of a three wide as we're on the outside three wide on this opening lap of the second stage heading down this front straightaway closing in on the back of Jones who drops down to the inside. We're going to go four wide through the triangle with Jones, Bubba Wallace, and Stenhouse and somehow we get through there without any contact at all as we look to the outside of Daniel Hemrick into turns one continuing to ride on this outside lane at this point. Now obviously wanting to be on that bottom but just couldn't quite get down to the bottom on this restart. Now as William Byron is down there as well as we actually made a little bit of contact with the 43 of Bubba Wallace but we would be able to get ahead of him and then eventually get up to P13 on the inside lane just in front of Kislowski behind our teammate of Eric Almarola. Johnson at this point had fallen from the lead to a little bit back. Now there's actually a spinner right behind us. It's Brad Kislowski in the number two car who goes spinning in front of the field. The 43 of Bubba Wallace involved a few other cars like the 38 of David Ragan, but that could have been a lot more severe than what it actually was as the caution would come out here in stage two and we will get ready to go green. No pit stop necessary as we will get ready to go back green from the 12th position on the outside of Matt Tips. So Kislowski goes spinning, nearly collecting a lot of cars, but thankfully for the field that did not happen. But after the caution came out, I actually ran into the back of another car, or my AI did, which means we got the restart glitch. The car was really slow, so obviously I could not take off on this restart. There was only two laps to go on the stage, so it completely destroyed our chances. As we came down this back straightaway, we had actually been able to hold off the inside lane and at least get back up into this draft and run down this pack as we went down into turn three, but at this point now P20 because of this restart glitch, so the point, chance of us getting stage points were very low at this point now as it was the three of Austin Dillon leading the ways. We're trying to go three wide up the middle between the 22 and the double zero, but that hole closed. Thankfully, we didn't cause an incident now as we cross the line to start the final lap here in stage two as we're going to look to the inside of Joey Logano as we head down towards turns one. Landon Castle, this season's Daytona 500 winner on our outside as we come through the center of the corner. Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, uh, some other drivers uh, like Jimmy Johnson, I believe Kyle Larson, all up on the outside lane as we exit turn two, heading down this back straightaway. The 52 goes to the inside of us. The double zero on our outside. We get split through the middle now down into a three wide move, but we thankfully get in behind Landon Castle as we go down this back straightaway into turns three for the final time here in stage two. Austin Dillon easily leading over Chase Elliott and William Byron. So uh, continuing to see Hendrick Motorsports at least run well other than the RCR driver leading the pack down to the green uh, checkered flag as Austin Dillon wins stage two. We cross the line behind Landon Castle to unfortunately get P20 here on the second stage. Obviously still a little bit more racing to go with one more stage uh, in the books ready to go there as you continue to see uh, Hendrick Motorsports second, third, and fourth, and then ninth. So Jimmy Johnson once again gets some stage points as we would pit for your two cans of fuel and four tires and get ready to go green where we thankfully this time do gain a position and get ready to start stage three from P19. My biggest goal within this final stage was just to make sure that we don't have a guy that's like 25th, 26th in points go and win here in Daytona because I really don't want one of those drivers in the playoffs because it's just going to be, going to be a waste of a playoff position. Obviously, I would like to help Jimmy Johnson and William Byron, the 24 and the 48 car, if possible here in Daytona. I would love to see both of them in the playoffs, but it looks like it's going to actually come down to just either one of those drivers and I would prefer to get Jimmy Johnson in but we'll see how it goes between him and William Byron now there's still plenty of racing left in this last part of the regular season so anything can happen as we go down this back straightaway of this opening lap in the third and final stage at Daytona as we go down into turn three behind the one car of Kurt Busch now as we are looking up the inside of Landon Castle obviously still 13 laps to go 12 once we hit the line Jimmy Johnson had actually taken the lead on that outside lane as he went down this front straightaway so certainly showing a lot of speed in the 48 car from Jimmy Johnson 
Johnson, which we haven't seen really all season long. He's had a few races where he's run really well, but here today in Daytona, that team has brought a lot of speed, and Hendrick Motorsports just seems to be very fast so far here tonight in Daytona, but now that the sun has fallen, are we going to see the same thing uh, from Hendrick Motorsports there? You can see all the way up ahead, Johnson, Elliott, and William Byron all up inside the top four, so certainly they got something going on today that's really working for them as we look to the outside of Kurt Busch and on the inside of Hamlin, three wide up the middle down at this back straightaway. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite working there in the turn three, but thankfully we cleared Hamlin and eventually we will get to the inside of Alex Bowman as came through on lap 31 now at this point. Kurt Busch had actually been able to stay clear of me as we side drafted the 88 just a tiny bit right there. Now, as you can uh, see, the 24 of William Byron, Jimmy Johnson, Elliott all on that top line as they're starting to fall back a little bit here with less than 10 laps to go in Daytona as we go down into turns one. Daniel Hemrick was leading at this point as we came through trying to get to the inside of William Byron. Actually, was thinking about letting him in, but then the caution would come out here in Daytona with nine laps to go. So this will force a late race restart in Daytona. Corey LeJoy brought out the yellow, but no pit stops were necessary as we get back going here in Daytona. At this point, only six laps remain at the Super Speedway. And up ahead, you can see a bunch of notable drivers that aren't usually up front. Daniel Hemrick, Austin Dillon, Tyler Reddick, I believe Matt Tift is up there in the mix as well. Right in front of us, Brendan gone. So certainly a huge opportunity to have an upset winner, and that would completely shake up things in the playoffs with putting a driver that doesn't deserve to be in the playoffs actually into it. Now it's come through turns uh, one and two up the inside of Austin Dillon, three wide up the middle. And it was, I'm doing what I can to gain whatever I can, because like I said, I was very concerned that we were going to have a surprise winner uh, here in Daytona, as it's a very common occurrence for the plate races here in our career mode. As we're still three wide up the middle between Austin Austin Dillon in the 88 of Alex Bowman, but thankfully we get clear of Austin Dillon through the center of the corner as we were approaching uh, just a handful of laps to go. Five at the line. There's their three wide up in front of us for second place. Uh, Larson involved the 31 and the 36 there as we cross the line, hitting five to go. And at this point, we had kind of gotten stuck up on this outside, obviously on that restart, but I was trying to find a way to get to the inside of Brendan Gunn. He kind of covered it off, but thankfully as we came through on lap 37, we had gotten up the inside of Brendan Gunn, running now P13 behind the 48 of a Jimmy Johnson. Daniel Hemrick was leading a single file train, so I would finally, though, get to the bottom, past Jimmy Johnson, past William Byron, Matt Tift, and then make a three wide with Stenhouse and Kyle Larson, and all of a sudden, once we got to this bottom in the single file train, we were flying. We got to the inside of Alex Bowman, and with two laps to go, we had found ourselves in P5 with a huge run on the back of Kurt Busch. We looked to the inside of him, and there you see Joey Logano as well, gonna slice down nearly in front of us. I got out of the throttle just a little bit, because I thought Logano was gonna kinda close that gap, and that hurts my momentum through the center of turns one and turns two. There you see the RCR teammates of Daniel Hemrick and Tyler Reddick leading the way, looking for both of them to lock themselves into the playoffs. Now, as we look to the inside of Logano, and we get clear of Joey Logano down into turn three, so now, all of a sudden, we found ourselves in third position as we look to the outside of Tyler Reddick, but as soon as we pulled out of the draft, the momentum just completely died, so we had to get back in line behind the 31. Obviously, we need to pounce and make a move on Reddick, but he's trying to cover up that bottom as we go down in the trial to start the final lap here with Daytona International Speedway there's the 22 going high. Now we look to the inside of the 31, but the problem is the 8 went up high and gave him a little bit of a draft, but now we go down into turns 1. Hemrick right in front of us as we got to get clear of the 31 by the time we come out of turns 2, but unfortunately, it's not going to happen. And Daniel Hemrick moves up the track to help his teammate of Tyler Reddick, and now Reddick has the run back on us, and this is completely destroying our chances of passing Daniel Hemrick on this final lap. Last episode, we finished second in Chicago and with a duel with Kyle Busch, but we clear the 31 through turns 3 and turns for Daniel Hemrick looking for career win number one and to clinch himself into the playoffs as we exit turns four. We have the run, but it looks like he's going to protect the bottom. Sure enough, he pulls left as we do the same. And now we look to the right-hand side, but it's not going to be enough to pass Daniel Hemrick at the line as I just didn't have uh, the time to get to him, obviously. I didn't even get to his back bumper. I was very close to his back bumper, but unfortunately didn't quite happen as Tyler Reddick was the sole reason we couldn't pass uh, Daniel Hemrick, unfortunately. I did not have a media quote after this race as there really wasn't really much to say uh, about that one on our part. Unfortunately, those two second place finishes in a row, this one was just kind of a little bit different how it worked out. Uh, I tried to get to the back of Daniel Hammer because I really did not want a uh, surprise winner like that to get himself in the playoffs when he's going to easily get eliminated in round one when another guy could point his way in and maybe have at least a better chance than what Daniel Hammer would have. But uh, at least congrats to Daniel Hammer career win number one. He's in 
the playoffs. But as always, if you guys did enjoy this episode, uh, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be very appreciated. In the next one, we go to the mile and a half again at Kentucky, a track that I enjoy. So hopefully we can run well there as you see the playoff grid on your screen. Kyle Busch hasn't won in one race, so that might be a new record this season. As William Byron's the last car in, there's a playoff shakeup on your screen right now. Jimmy Johnson and Ryan Blaney are now out. Johnson out by eight. Blaney won. Byron still in, but Landon Castle's back in the top 30. Hamrick in the top 30 with a win. So all of a sudden we have two guys that get in based off of win and not in points. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these next races go. So obviously, guys, in the next one, thank you for watching, everyone, and have a great day.